afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janae Norris. I'm a Senior Associate Director for Recruitment here at Binghamton University. Um, I have an amazing panel joining me here today, and Michael Henningsen is going to be joining us um, to help with chat as well. So if everyone wouldn't mind introducing themselves that's on the panel. We start with Michael. Do you want to start? Sure. Hi, welcome everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Huntington. I'm the Transfer Admissions Specialist for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. And as Janae said, I will be handling any question, questions that uh, you all may have that you can type in the Q&A box um, here in chat. And we will either be answering them through the question and answer, or we could save some questions um, for the very end. So welcome, and we're so glad you're here today. Hey, you want to, we can start with Connor. Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Connor Blanchard. I'm a senior um, from Belmore, Long Island. I'm majoring in accounting with a concentration in finance and a minor in education. And how about John V next? Hi, everyone. My name is John V Chaudhary. I'm currently a senior studying business administration and finance, and I am from Queens, New York. And not, last but not least, Erica. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Erica. I'm a senior from Franklin Square, Long Island. Um, I'm studying business analytics and marketing, and I'm also minoring in graphic design. So hopefully everyone's in the right session. We are doing a, a little information about the School of Management and really preparing for your future um, high impact experiences in the School of Management. Some of you may not know, but the School of Management is highly recognized, um, whether you look at things like our number three for the best college for accounting and finance in New York or things like the top value business schools. Um, the School of Management is recognized when you talk to companies, when you talk to um, employers, they really do want Binghamton graduates to come and work for them. We have about 1,600 students in the School of Management. Um, they come for, you know, predominantly from all over, <laughs> 53 states, or it says 53 states and territories, uh, 115 different countries. Um, I actually think the number may be 54, um, last I looked, but uh, that diversity changes every day. Um, so you never know in terms of the School of Management, um, the types of students that you're gonna be having connections with um, in your classroom. And then um, also alumni coming back, it's, it's vast and diverse. And there's student experiences throughout the, the globe. When you look, Binghamton has both accounting and business administration. Within business administration, you can choose many different concentrations or career tracks, including entrepreneurship, finance or quantitative finance, marketing, management information systems, supply chain management, leadership and consulting, and business analytics. If you do visit our website, there's descriptions of what each of these entails. Um, and we, you know, we're, um, this session really is to focus more about some of the impact and the experiences that we have. But certainly we also have information sessions that are more general, um, as well as counselors that are available to answer any specific questions that you may have about nuances of different programs. There are also options for you to go on for your um, master's in accounting um, or to do a one year MBA. Um, so there's uh, both in Binghamton or in New York City. So there's options for students to do that. We have very strong student placement. When you look, 95% of our students were placed at six months after graduation with an average starting salary of about 66,000. That's about $10,000 above the national starting salaries. Um, and I think it's because of the type of experiences that Binghamton students have that make them stand out to the companies. There's over 2000 types of companies that are coming in recruiting our graduates. They are really, you know, all different types of companies and um, from small firms to large, uh, massive um, international companies that are seeking out our graduates. There's a lot that we do and we have plans for our students from the time they come to orientation through post-graduation of things that you should be doing um, to make yourself stand out and be prepared for the, to work for those companies. Um, we have sessions, a school of management specifically has their own career services staff that works with students. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about them and some of the things that they do and the students that what they've experienced with them also during this session. Um, but I think it's important to know that, you know, one of the things that I'm very proud of um, is that Binghamton in terms of our outcomes and uh, the types of companies is companies will come back and tell Binghamton that the Binghamton students have saved them a significant amount of money. Um, because of the type of experiences that they have or the recommendations that they make um, when they're working for those companies. Mazda Corporation actually sponsored one of our case competitions recently. Um, and the, the vice president of the American division was here on campus. And what he said was that they saved significant amount of money because of the training time that they needed. Um, when they got into the company, 
they hit the ground running. Um, typically, it had been taking about a year for training programs for them. The Binghamton students did it in about three months. So that's a significant amount of savings that they did for the Mazda Corporation. Um, and there's other companies that have said and, and come to campus and uh, spoke a little bit about some of the experiences that our graduates have when they get out there, um, looking at them and seeing how um, they excel. As I said, experiential learning is what we're here to talk a little bit more about in, in depth. Um, we have lots of different opportunities for students to gain experiential learning. And I think it's really kind of something that makes Binghamton very unique in the type of experiences that we have. It's both in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. Um, things like the Dean's Case Competition, the JCOR Live Cases, we'll be talking a little bit more in depth about. Um, there's, you know, different organizations and, and challenges that are supported and sponsored by Binghamton and some really unique hands-on courses that are only to Binghamton. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the Jeffries externship, the Xena strategy, um, some of the different choices and, and options that you have. And we actually have spaces on campus that have really been designated just for the School of Management students to kind of gain those experiences. Things like our Zurich Scholars and um, opportunities really to be, um, you know, almost as if you're in the trading room floor. Um, so we have a, a designated room just for students that have an interest in finance and, and looking at investments. So they have their own space and their own um, opportunities to have a, there's a fund that was sponsored by one of our Binghamton alumni that is designed to allow students that opportunity to gain that experience while they're at Binghamton and actually invest and say, you know, this is the best strategy that we should take to, um, you know, invest in, and make money for the campus. Um, so they do actually do that. Um, there's so many other different organizations that are here on, on Binghamton's campus. There's 25 plus school of management student organizations that students are a part of. So really, there's, if you can't find it, you can start it. And it's another opportunity and, and challenge for our students. If it's something that's new and up and coming, we have um, lots of organizations that students have begun. Um, and I encourage you to kind of, you know, if there's something that's coming to the forefront that's of your mind and it's not here, you can certainly have that opportunity to start that club. And that's something that's going to add to your resume and your types of experiences. I want to turn it over now. I'm going to actually stop presenting here. Um, I did. We did introduce at the beginning our student panel, uh, but in, I just wanted to put up as far as some of their background a little bit. And then I'm also going to ask them to talk a little bit more about their experiences and their concentrations and whatnot. So let me end my share here. And we can get started with some questions for our panel. And one of the first questions I just want to ask is if you wouldn't mind um, talking a little bit about your major and what your doing, your plans are to do with that and what the type of experiences that you've had with, within the major. I can start it off. Okay. Um, so like I said earlier, um, I'm majoring in accounting with a concentration in finance. So those are my two um, school of management, you know, kind of curriculum paths. And so after graduation, um, I plan on taking the CPA exam. Um, and I'll be starting at KPMG um, in their deal advisory practice full time after graduation. And I interned there last summer. Um, so I definitely think that, you know, the accounting program that we have here is really good in terms of preparation for the CPA exam, as well as kind of preparation for, you know, recruiting and working at the big four firms. Um, I know a lot of students from Binghamton tend to go there. My intern class this summer, we were the second highest school in the entire New York office in terms of intern placement. I, mean, I know that that's the same across the all of the big four. Um, so I definitely think that you know the classes that I've taken, the professors that I've had, and the different organizations have prepared me for those types of careers, specifically in accounting and with finance as well. Thank you, Connor. Um, I can go next. So I guess coming into school, I had the idea that I wanted to do something with business and something with marketing. I was really enticed by like strategic planning or creative thinking, something like that, like working on a team, doing presentation. Um, that was kind of the idea coming into school. Um, and then you quickly see that there's a pattern that if you go to a school for marketing, it's really um, beneficial to back that with something more quantitative. So that was why I opted for the business analytics concentration to kind of give myself the one side of more um, qualitative skills with marketing concentration and then the quantitative side with business analytics. A lot of people will also do um, a concentration in MIS, but business analytics was actually 
relatively new to Binghamton. It was made while I was studying here and it just kind of combines aspects of supply chain management, marketing and management information systems, which was why I was really interested in adding that to what I was studying. And then I've always liked um, art, being creative, and I think graphic design complements marketing well too. So that was why I wanted to definitely have that packed in with my uh, college experience as well. So I am a finance major and I pretty much came into the School of Management knowing what field I wanted to pursue, that being finance. I didn't know what exactly specifically, but through my classes and my courses and through mentorship and other uh, experiences I, I had from other organizations, I quickly learned about various opportunities within front office finance, such as investment banking or sales and trading. Um, and I decided that I wanted to pursue more of a markets facing role. And so I will be joining Nomura, which is a Japanese investment bank full-time post-graduation. Thank you. Um, so I know that each of you have done different case competitions. If you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about which competition you've done and then what did you gain from it? And also if you could explain a little bit about what that means, because I'm not sure that high school students um, necessarily know that what the case competition idea model is. Um, I could start it off. So don't feel like you're behind if you don't know what a case competition is, because I had no idea what it was. And then Binghamton is like, all case, like it's very um, emphasized case competitions, and they are great. You get a lot of experience and just a great learning opportunity from them. Basically, you'll be given a company, some are real, some are made up just for the learning portion of it. Um, and they're gonna have some kind of problem proposed. Uh, maybe they need to increase their revenues or expand or just become more competitive. Some, something like that will be outlined. And then you're usually working in a team and it's a competition style. So other teams are also trying to come up with solutions. And basically the whole point is that you're researching what's happening in this industry, trying to come up with a solution for this company that you think will make them more successful, more competitive, anything like that. And then usually you're creating a presentation that outlines what your solution is for that company. And the idea is that it's almost like you're pitching to that company what you would recommend them to do. So usually in this competition style, you're presenting to judges. And then depending on how the competition is run, usually there's a finalist section. Sometimes it's sponsored by a company and then sometimes you um, either win something for coming in first place, you might be able to send your resumes through to that company that's sponsoring it, or it's just a really good learning experience that you can put on your resume. Um, so that's kind of like breaking down what a co case competition is. So um, I guess one of, I've done, I think all three of us have done a lot of case competitions throughout school. You start off with, um, right in your very first freshman class, everyone takes Management 111. You take a few different case competition experiences just from that class. So you're kind of starting right off the bat with a lot of case experience. Um, EY Tech X is one that really got me um, kind of a foot in the door with um, just my team did well. It was a half random team. So um, it was just a big learning experience, great for my resume, and then it kind of got me to talk a lot with different upperclassmen that are also involved in a lot of school of management um, involvements, so that was great. And then flash forwarding to senior year, um, this semester I did the Zenith Strategic Media Planning case. This was sponsored by Zenith, which is um, a company under Publicist Media, which is a really big media company. Um, it literally the entire class that I took is basically building a media plan for a, one of their clients, which was Duncan this semester. Um, and it was really great. It was different because it was virtual. So we, my team was meeting virtually once a week. Um, Dean Babinski is, um, is a really big professor here. He runs the class. So we were meeting with him once a week. And then um, our final present, our finals finalists got to present in front of the Zenith Media um, executives and Publicist Media's CEO. So my group was fortunate enough to make it to finals and actually win. 
Um, so it was a really awesome experience and it was a nice um, learning experience of specific to media planning, which is different than a lot of different um, learning experiences you might get here. So that was a really long explanation, but that was some of my case experiences. No, it's Erica, I think that was a great explanation. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you, either of you want to talk a little bit about other case competitions that you've been involved in and what you learned from that? Sure. Um, so I could continue. Um, I took part in the EY TechX case competition that Erica um, participated in my sophomore year, as well as the PwC challenge case competition and the KPMG strategic blueprint case competition, it was called. Um, and all of these are different competitions that, as Erica mentioned, were sponsored by different firms. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to advance to the finals rounds of each of these, um, which afforded me the opportunity to present in front of alumni at these firms, as well as different managers, partners, um, and different levels of those firms, which I felt helped me massively um, while recruiting. Um, and I saw a couple of questions in the Q&A portion talking about consulting. And I think that these case competitions are a really big step to help you prepare for the world of consulting. Um, that's the, in terms of the skills that I had, as well as the application process and networking steps, um, consulting and advisory were the positions that I applied for across all of the big four. Um, and taking part in these case competitions really helped me meet people that could then vouch for me. They've seen the work that I've produced as a portion, as a part of what I've learned at school management. Um, they've seen what I'm capable of, and then they're more comfortable vouching for me or kind of pushing my resume along when it came time to apply for internships and things like that. Um, so I would definitely say to some of the people that were asking about consulting that case competitions is one of the easiest ways to A, get involved and build your skills as well as B, kind of set yourself up for a career in consulting or advisory afterwards. Speaking more towards um, the finance route, so I participated in two competitions hosted by the school's finance society. Um, we have the mergers and acquisitions case competition sponsored by Raymond James, and we have the equity research case competition, which is a stock pitch competition sponsored by Barclays, which is another investment bank. So the mergers and acquisitions case competition is really more focused on investment banking and really gives you an opportunity to act as an investment banking analyst along with your team um, and look at two companies that are potentially looking to merge or a company that's looking to acquire another company, um, for example, Amazon and Whole Foods, and really provide a recommendation on, say, how Amazon could go about acquiring the company, how the two could merge and integrate into one combined company, and how the deal could be financed. The equity research stock pitch competition sponsored by Barclays is um, more of a stock pitch competition as in the name. So you really have the opportunity to freely look at the stock market and pick a company that you think is a good investment, whether it be a long or a short in your opinion and come up with an investment thesis and pitch that to us. And in terms of learning all this information. If you don't have any experience or any prior knowledge, do not be afraid to just come to Finance Society and get involved with those case competitions. We usually have freshmen and sophomores doing it and the Finance Society teaches you everything that you need to know to be able to succeed in the competitions. And I did see that there was a question about um, investment bankings and or investment banks recruiting. Um, so this, these two competitions are a really great way to build up your resume. and also to network with alumni, because if you do make it to the final round, you have the opportunity to go to Raymond James or Barclays um, and present in front of alumni and then network with them at the end and send your resume around as well. So it's really a great opportunity to get your foot in the door. Thank you. Um, have you had a mentor while you've been at Binghamton and how did you find them? Through my time at Binghamton, I, I've had three mentors. Um, I, as soon as you come into Binghamton as a freshman, you end up taking Management 111, which is kind of the introductory course. So through that, you have the opportunity to get paired with an alumni who is in an, I mean, get paired with a mentor who's in an industry that you want to pursue. Um, so that's kind of how I met my first mentor. We really ended up hitting it off and um, once she learned that I was interested in pursuing finance, just as she had, she really kind of just took me under her wing. Um, I was able to 
ask her any questions that I possibly had. And she showed me the training room and introduced me to some other upperclassmen who was, I was also able to chat with and get to know. Um, and then through my time in school, I also participated in the Dean's Mentoring Program and the PwC Scholars Program. So that's how I met my other two mentors. Um, and you're not just randomly paired, you have the opportunity to kind of speed date or fill out a form so that you can get matched with a mentor who not, you'll not only get along with and be able to be friends with, but who's also pursuing the industry that you wanna pursue. Um, so that's how I met my other two mentors. And I definitely say that all three of my mentors are really instrumental in preparing me to recruit for internships, um, become a professional and get ready to be in the industry full-time. They helped introduce me to alumni within their network. And that's how I was able to build my network. Um, and uh, beyond that, I am still friends with all three of my mentors. So it's definitely a great opportunity. I think one thing that makes Binghamton stand out to me is that um, I think I remember looking at schools and a lot of the business schools came off very cutthroat where it's like, if you want the same job, I'm going to do anything I can to get it over you or just like a not collaborative or culture. And I don't think Binghamton really aligns with that. I think Binghamton, a lot of the students that go here are genuinely interested in helping their peers and like helping other people succeed, which is part of why I've really enjoyed my experience here. And that's definitely shown through mentors, um, very similar to Jean V and I think Connor, like we all have very similar experiences of having mentors right off the bat coming in as freshmen, not really knowing anything. Um, it really helps set the groundwork for the rest of your time in school management. Um, they kind of really break down how to start networking, how to start comp case competitions, um, really just someone that you can go to with anything that you're just not sure about. Um, and then that's just for Management 111, a class that you have to take. And then from there, it's really up to you. So we all applied and got into the mentoring program, which Connor can speak to more. Um, but that's where you're, you can also be paired with a one-on-one -on -one mentor really geared towards what your career goals are. And they're there for you to really lay out what you want to do, lay out your network, get you comfortable with reaching out to professionals. And that really helps set the tone for like you and your future. Um, and then what is nice is that now that we're all seniors, a lot of us have become mentors ourselves. So this past semester and this year before, I was a mentor for Management 111. So it's really rewarding to get to stay connected with the new coming freshmen um, and also get to like pass down everything that was passed down to me. Um, and same with Dean's mentoring program, um, you can become a mentor for that as well. So I think that all kind of stems from the culture of Binghamton that a lot of students really want to see their peers succeed, which I think stands out as a school. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to jump one last point on the end of Erica, something that she mentioned and something that I really want to you know, emphasize when they talk about Management 111 and their experiences with that. And I've had similar experiences with them, um, but also to emphasize the fact that all of the people that are mentors within the School of Management it's not something that you have to take as a class, as a senior, like, oh, you have to do this before you graduate. Everybody that signs up to be a mentor for any organization, for any program is doing so because they want to give back the time and effort that they received as an underclassman. Um, you don't really get anything out of it in terms of like a boost to your GPA or anything like that. Um, it's all something that people do because of how much they appreciated it when they were freshmen. Um, or sophomores. And it's something I think that is also important to understand as a freshman that everybody that has signed up is there because they want to help you. Um, and that's something that, you know, if you need a little bit more time understanding something or you want to go a little bit more into depth in something, um, that's what your mentor is for. And I think that that's something that should really be understood that as a freshman and sophomore, there's tons of people that are willing to help kind of almost hold your hand through the first couple of semesters through school to make sure, you know, you're on whatever track that you want to be a part of to succeed. Thank you. Um, would any of you mind talking a little bit about the guidance that you receive as far as the advising? Um, so your advisors, as far as the courses, and then also um, from the Career Center as well, as far as what 
things that they've recommended or suggestions they've made for you? Sure, I could um, speak to this from both sides, just because now um, last year and this year, I'm a peer advisor in the School of Management uh, undergraduate office. So I help students when it comes time to plan for like their course registration, um, picking out different classes, as well as kind of helping them find which major might be more interesting to them from a curriculum standpoint. Um, and I think that's something that's really beneficial about our office is that you know, you can schedule your appointments with the professional senior advisors who are full-time professional associates of the school. Um, but also we have myself and four others who are peer advisors, so either junior or seniors. Um, and I think that we bring, you know, interesting experiences to the table of, as students who have taken all of the classes in the School of Management, as well as several of the classes outside of SOM, that again, it's definitely a very student-oriented um, school and that I feel that sometimes we may be the best people to ask for advice on certain classes um, in terms of like, oh, should I take this class? What is your opinion on this professor? Things like that, that I think is really key in terms of something that our office brings as a resource from the advising standpoint. Adds that as just someone like not behind the scenes, just like a student looking for help. Um, what's great is that like, so directly you can go into career services. They have, um, people that you can speak to like Connor um for like more like direct help what's also nice is that uh career services also sends out emails pretty like I think weekly um one focused on opportunities and one just focused on like upcoming events um I usually pay attention more to the opportunities one um and that actually helps me a lot um it's just to students in SOM so it's not exclusive but it's nice that like the jobs or opportunities that are coming towards you are specific to what you might be majoring in. Um, so I actually, my sophomore year got a job directly through a link in one of their emails for a campus ambassador program for Coca-Cola. Um, that was the only way I heard about this program. I didn't Google it. I didn't know about it ahead of time. It was only through career services. So, and that experience definitely was a huge thing for me throughout school. Um, and then this year, um, I, there was another career services email sent about um, remote internship opportunities to take advantage of during the semester. And I was able to get a remote internship throughout the fall this year through another career services email. So that's just the indirect like help that career services provides. And then it's also the direct service, like, um, help if you need to talk one-on-one -on -one or resume critiques or anything like that. So I just wanted to add that because that was huge, especially for marketing. It can be really tough finding different opportunities, especially in this climate and career services through Binghamton definitely helped me throughout that. So I did have a live admissions questions that I was going to answer, which is the, is there a separate admissions process for the School of Management? Um, students do apply directly to the School of Management when they apply and you can be directly admitted. We also have an intra-university transfer process for students that they can go through once they're at Binghamton if they're not in School of Management. So I did wanna touch, throw that one in there. Um, do any of you have experience with the Zurich Trading Room? Yes, I can speak to that question. Um, okay. So the Zurich Scholars Program is really focused on providing resources and opportunities to students who are interested in pursuing a career within investment banking or other front office finance roles such as sales and trading or equity research. And you really gain the opportunity to network with Mark Zurek, who is an alumni uh, from the School of Management and you get access to the Zurek Trading Room, which is the school's trading room where we have Bloomberg terminals available for students to utilize and learn how to use and really just gain access to an abundance of research on the stock market that is available on them. Additionally, there are some classes that you are required to take that are a little bit more advanced. Um, and you also gain additional networking opportunities with other alumni. Um, it is, you, you apply in your sophomore year. And then if you get in, the program continues throughout your senior year. Uh, and as a sophomore, as a Zurich scholar, you also have the opportunity to apply to either the investment banking boot camp or the Markets Boot Camp. So these are two programs which are designed to help sophomores get ready for the 
uh, internship recruitment cycle for your junior year. And those programs really prepare you to gain the knowledge and the interview skills necessary to not only um, perform well in the behavioral interviews, but also to perform well in technical finance interviews. Okay, thank you. Um, so speaking of the, the different types of clubs and organizations, what are some of the organizations that you've both, you've all been involved in? I know you've mentioned some of them, but um, if you wanna talk a little bit about some of the clubs and organizations that you find unique to Binghamton or that you've been involved in. So this year, I am the president of the Dean's Mentoring Program. So it's a program that Erica, myself, and John V all did when we were freshmen. Um, and Erica and John V were also mentors in the program last year. Um, and basically the program is designed to fast track students' professional development um, through a one-on-one -on -one mentorship that takes place in either the spring of their freshman or junior years. Um, so that's one of the organizations I'm a part of. The next one is that I'm the senior, senior advisor to the management consulting group. And so last year I was vice president and helped kind of plan some of the case competitions that we mentioned earlier. Um, so I definitely think that that's also been really valuable in helping me kind of figuring out what roles I've been interested in, in terms of consulting slash advisory related fields. Um, and lastly, I'm a member of the PwC Scholars Program, which has also helped me immensely in terms of just, you know, continuing to make friends and make relationships within the School of Management, as well as help prepare me kind of for my next steps after school as well as being a peer advisor in the undergraduate advising office. Um, as Connor mentioned, I was involved in the Dean's Mentoring Program as a mentor and a mentee. Um, I'm also in the PwC Scholars Program. Um, I think, I know coming into school, I was a little confused about what PwC Scholars was. So I actually didn't come into it as a freshman. I applied in as a sophomore. Um, so that's also something to note, like there's opportunities that come your way as you're a student as well, if you, even if you don't get the opportunity to be a PwC Scholar directly through um, coming into school. That's another thing um, I'm involved in. I was a mentor for Management 111. Um, I was a tour guide for Binghamton. Um, unfortunately, with how things are right now, that stopped. So hopefully I'll be able to do a tour before I graduate, but we'll see. Um, I, as I mentioned, I was a campus ambassador for Coca-Cola um, for a couple of years. And then I'm also um, in the sorority Kappa Kappa Gamma. So that's just some of the involvement. Um, so just as Erica mentioned, I joined the PwC Scholars Program as a sophomore. Uh, so definitely don't be discouraged if you don't get admitted right away as a freshman. And as Connor also mentioned, I was part of the Dean's Mentoring Program as a mentee my freshman year and uh, was a mentor last year. I'd definitely say that that program was instrumental in uh, jumpstarting my professional development and also like bolstering my confidence as a young professional and you know getting me really ready to get out there and and go through the interview process and recruitment process for internships um, other than that i am currently the co-president of the school's finance society um, and i sit on the board of directors for the student-run investment fund um, so these are really two programs that kind of and organizations that work hand in hand in terms of helping to create a pipeline um, to get students to be able to compete with um, other target schools for the um, internships and job prospects at investment banks. Um, and I've also been involved with the Women in Finance Development Program, which is a new program that has been started to help um, increase the number of women deciding to pursue finance. So I know that um, so many of you have talked about the internships um, in terms of those experiences, but can you take us through the process of how you found those internships um, in terms of when, when you're at Binghamton and then um, a little bit about some of the experiences when you're at the internships as well? Yes, for sure. So um, my first internship experience was actually within the School of Management. So Jeffries, which is an investment bank, has a partnership with the finance department at the School of Management, um, where they host a remote equity research internship that is exclusive just to School of Management students. So you have the opportunity to apply internally through the school um, and you get to interview with the professor who kind of um, works with the alumni to run the program. And 
once you get through that interview, you have an interview at the investment bank with the teams that will you'll be working with potentially. Um, and then if you get through that, you have this amazing opportunity to learn what it is to be a professional within finance um, and kind of gain that first experience at having the opportunity to work hands-on and actually learn about the types of projects that you'll have the opportunity to work on um, within the world of finance. So I guess an example of that is I did have the opportunity to um, create a report um, that kind of just had my opinion on a potential investment within a company that was about to go public and the firm ended up publishing this before the company even went public. So that was definitely something uh, that was exciting to work on. Um, and then in terms of the other internships that I've held, I've um, spent my past two summers at JP Morgan. The way that I found about, out about that internship was through the School of Management. So as Erica mentioned before, um, there is an opportunities newsletter that comes out every week. So I would kind of just skim that every week and make sure you're looking out for opportunities that they have and just apply. Even if you think that you're not ready, just apply. Cause I definitely didn't think I was ready when I was applying to that JP Morgan internship. Um, and I ended up making it through to the final round interview uh, and you know, things went well from there. Your mentors will also help you prepare if you ask them for a mock interview. So that was something that was definitely helpful. Um, and it's really a great opportunity to, you know get out and get some involvement and some experience on your resume. Um, I had three very different internship like ways of getting those opportunities. My first one was that I knew I wanted to study abroad and I saw a question in the Q&A. So I just wanted to add to that. Um, I really wanted to study abroad, but I didn't want to study abroad for a full semester. I wanted to just have a couple, like maybe a month, like a more of a short term experience. Um, and I also didn't really want to take classes while I was abroad. I was more interested in trying to get some kind of professional development out of it. So what's great about Binghamton is that it is part of the SUNY system. So I had researched like the SUNY programs that were offered directly through Binghamton and none of them were exactly what I wanted. So I was able to tap into other SUNY programs offered by other SUNY schools. Um, and that's how I found an internship study abroad program through the Fashion Institute of Technology, which is in the CUNY program. So it's still, I was still able to apply into that. Um, so they actually, I got accepted. They placed me into a internship for a month. Um, and I got to study abroad while interning at um, J. Walter Thompson in London. So that was an incredible experience. And I definitely recommend trying to study abroad if you can. Um, that was just like insane. And I really hope studying abroad comes back. I think it will very soon. Um, so that's definitely something to take advantage of. So that I really kind of went out on my own to find. Then the following summer, I was just applying to random things that I was searching for online, like brand agencies, uh, marketing agencies, literally anything. And that's sometimes considered less common to find, but I was able to get um, a summer remote internship with a company called Brandtuitive, which ended up being remote because it was this past summer. And then my last internship, as I mentioned, was through Career Services. So there's a wide range of how you can get these opportunities. It's really just a matter of what you want, luck, and the opportunities that come by you through uh, the school as well. So one of the students asked the question, how would you describe the workload in school of management? It, it's really up to you. Uh, it also, like you'll have your coursework from your classes and it will be a considerable amount of work, but it's like, the amount of work that you would expect, um, depending on whether it was a three credit course or a four credit course. Um, and in terms of like how much more work you could have, that depends on how involved you get um, with organizations outside of class, which I think both Erica and Connor can also speak to. Um, so if you're like one of us and end up getting very involved, you'll end up working probably really hard. Um, but I definitely say that it is possible to have that work-life balance and still be able to have that social life or engage in other um, leisure activities that you have an interest in. I could jump in as well because I think uh, you prefaced the, the question with being a member of the athletics department or one of the uh, teams here at Binghamton. Uh, I have several friends including some of the people that I live with um, that play division one sports and especially you know one of my roommates he's involved in some of the finance organizations that John V mentioned 
as well as taking two concentrations um, and is a member of the Division One golf team and is able to manage all of those. Um, so I would say, you know, along the lines of what John V said, it's a matter of how involved you want to be. Um, but at the same time, you can be, as I've experienced firsthand, incredibly involved in things and also, you know, make time for practices and your teams and your, whether it be tournaments, games, things like that. Um, there are plenty of people I know throughout the School of Management with varying levels of involvement um, and all, you know, speak to the fact that they're able to definitely get their classwork done and be as involved or as not as much involved in the different extracurriculars that the school offers um, just based off of their different interest levels. I think Connor and John, we said it perfectly. I think SOM, there's definitely a couple of challenging classes. Like you're going to run into that wherever you go, whatever you major in. But in terms of like your course load, it's definitely as challenging as you want to make it, especially with extracurriculars. And also since SUNY takes a lot of your credits, that really does open up. It has the potential to open up your schedule to taking on another concentration, double majoring in another school. Like it, it opens up opportunities for you if you want to take advantage of them or if you want to take advantage of having a freer schedule so that you can focus on extracurriculars or anything like that, those options are there as well. Great. It looks like we have one other question. And um, it was as a freshman, uh, what types of classes does business administration require you to take and what kind of classes can you take? Does any of the classes you take as a freshman touch upon accounting since accounting is part of the business field? Uh, I think I'll, I'll start off with this one since uh, it's part of my job as a peer advisor. Um, <laughs> I would say as a freshman, it is somewhat dependent on, as Erica mentioned, the credits that you come in with based off of high school. Um, so there's classes outside of the School of Management that everybody has to take in different general education sections, as well as four prerequisites that the School of Management considers. Um, so that's macroeconomics, microeconomics, statistics, and calculus. Um, so those, if a student doesn't come in with those, um, don't worry, there's plenty of students. You know, if you're in a senior in high school right now and you don't, you're not in all of these classes. Um, I was only in calculus when I was a senior and I know plenty of students that weren't in any of them and have still found ways to, you know, make up and be still way ahead of schedule come their junior, senior years. Um, so those are four classes that you're definitely going to want to take either your fall or spring of your freshman year. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, you're going to take management 111, your fresh fall of your freshman year, um, which is again, just an introduction to the business world, but also the school of management. Um, and then in terms of, you know, the accounting question that you asked, accounting 211 is financial accounting introduction to financial accounting. And that's something that you have to take regardless of if you are an accounting major or a business administration major, and that's usually taken your freshman or sophomore year. Um, and, and is you know, as I mentioned, a really good introduction into, you know, the financial statements, credits, debits, kind of the things that you typically think of in accounting at a very introductory level. Um, and as well as you're also required to take either managerial or cost accounting, which is definitely a little bit of a different approach to accounting than you might expect. Um, but both of those classes are required to both business administration and accounting students. So even if you're unsure, um, I know for a fact that I had no idea what I want to do coming into school, um, that you can take classes in basically any concentration um, at an introductory level before you have to decide what you kind of choose to pursue as a major or concentration. Okay. We had a student write a question. Can you talk about gender balance? Additionally, what is it like being a woman in business? Are there opportunities specifically for women in business advancing? Um, and I'll take the later part. <laughs> and uh, uh, there are some specific clubs on campus for um, to really encourage and, and foster women in businesses. Um, we also have an entrepreneurship um, program that's part of the School of Management and part of the university as a whole that also encourages women in business. Um, and there's actually tax incentives for students um, who wanna start their own businesses um, to, and th and that they can work with our incubator and actually get, and there's incentives there financially um, for women in business as well. So um, do you guys wanna to touch upon the gender balance in terms of in the classroom and um, what is it is like in terms of being in business as a woman? Um, so I definitely say that um, I think the there is probably honestly like more uh, male students than female students 
um, in the School of Management overall. Um, I don't see it as a problem um, or something as a negative at all. Uh, nobody, I've never experienced any situation where uh, somebody has, or a peer has discriminated or discouraged me to pursue finance, for example, um, based off my gender. They have actually been extremely encouraging. Um, and in terms of like opportunities that foster uh, and encourage women to get involved, there is the Women in Business organization. And as I mentioned, the Women in Finance Development Program. Um, and then in terms of opportunities that you'll have, there are also uh, gender or diversity specific op recruiting opportunities for internships that will be available to you that you should definitely take advantage of. And if you end up here at the School of Management, make sure to keep an eye out for the weekly opportunities newsletter and you'll definitely see those um, diversity opportunities open to you. Yeah, I think John V answers that really well. Um, I feel like I'm trying to think back of like my experience at school and trying to think if there was like a moment where I was like, oh my God, there's all like boys in my class. Like, but I really can't think of that. Um, like I think even if it is skewed slightly towards guy, like having more like male students, um, I don't feel like that was like a deterrent at all throughout school. Um, I mean, any program we were in, I feel like all of the, our, everyone in that program was equally motivated and equally encouraging towards everyone else. Again, like that culture of kind of wanting everyone to succeed, I think still stands by in this instance as well. Um, and I think just like, looking back at mentors or just people that graduated before us and seeing everything that they accomplished. There were just as many women that landed amazing jobs, had an amazing layout of what they did at school and accomplishments as um, male students. So I think that even if the classes might be slightly skewed, it's not, it's not going to necessarily affect what you accomplish or like where you end up after school. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I do have one final question for you all, um, which is why did you choose Binghamton? I, my long answer is always that I drove my parents crazy because I couldn't decide on a school. Um, and I had like eight pros and cons lists. So drove them crazy. And also don't feel like, pre like, don't feel like you're alone if you're in that boat. I know choosing a school is extremely intimidating and you feel like it's the biggest decision in the world. Um, at the end of the day, I think the main reasons why I chose Binghamton University was the value, the culture, and the opportunities. So the value was that they took so many of my, my high school credits, like college credits. That's huge. And it really opened the doors for me to try different majors, minors, um, study abroad. Like It just really opens up a lot of doors. Um, great price um, and great reputation as well. Um, I know coming in as marketing, I was really nervous about going to a school that was known for accounting, finance, consulting. Um, and I think the experiences I've shared with you guys have just kind of shown that um, career services, like there's so many opportunities to take advantage of, even if you're not those accounting, finance, consulting majors. Um, so that was all part of the value, the culture, as I've said throughout this, um, really stood out to me um, through mentoring, through um, networking, the alumni, there's so many alumni panelists. And I think that shows that they want to give back to a school that really set them on the, a great path. Um, and then opportunities is, is just like, I've really reaped the benefits of a lot of career services announcements and um, programs and so much things like that. So I think even though I was extremely indecisive, this was like, the best choice I could have made. Um, and it's almost overwhelming how many opportunities there are for you to take advantage of. So don't feel pressured, but Binghamton is a really great option for you. Um, especially like, don't feel pressured if you don't know what you want right now either. It's okay. Erica said it really well. Um, there are a lot of opportunities available to you at the school and the school does provide great value, not only in terms of the culture that it has, but in terms of the mentorship that you'll get um, and the alumni network you'll be able to build and the classes and the education that you'll also receive here. Uh, in terms of my decision process, it really came down to um, the value 
from the return on the investment that I was making in the school and in my education and in myself that I'd be receiving from Binghamton. Um, so it is a state school. Um, and, you know, the amount of money that you're investing into your education um, at this school, you get a really large outcome from it um, and a really great outcome and a really great return from it. Um, you're getting the stellar education. You have a vast amount of opportunities available to you. Um, I think a great example of this is the Jeffries remote internship program that I mentioned previously. That's exclusive just to the School of Management here at Binghamton. Um, and you also have a deep alumni network. Um, we have alumni at a lot of large firms, a lot of small firms um, in various industries ranging from finance to marketing to accounting to consulting. Um, so it is a great place to be. And a lot of the times I kind of think back to when I was in high school and you're spot making my decision. And every time I think about it, I just think to myself, wow, if I had gone to a different school, I don't think I would be in the position that I am today. It's definitely a great choice. I would say one of the things for me was that uh, I went to a pretty small high school and a lot of the other colleges that I applied to were smaller in terms of class size, overall university size and things like that. Um, and then I applied to Binghamton, um, which to some people may still be considered a small school, um, but to me it was a pretty big school um, and something that, you know, I saw as it was time for me to step outside of my comfort zone a little bit, get outside of my bubble and really challenge myself to take on a new opportunity. I um, mean, when I visited at an admitted students day, listening to all the students talk from different backgrounds as you guys are here today, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and saw that even though I didn't know what I wanted to do, I knew that I was going to be challenged and provided the opportunities to figure out what I want to do. And if, you know, there wasn't something there, um, definitely something that I can create opportunities for myself based off of the preparation that I received. And I would say that I didn't even know about half of the opportunities, the depth of the alumni network, things like that, when I applied and when I agreed to come to Binghamton. Um, and that's something that, you know, every time I learn more about these things and experience more of these things um, is something that, you know, I really think back and the decision that I made, I feel like gets better even by like the day and week, even as a senior, I learn more um, and make more connections and relationships with people that I'm like, man, like I definitely like look back. If I had known all these things, I would have decided in September um, rather than April. Thank you. Great answers. Um, I know that um, these are, you know, there's so many amazing reasons to come to Binghamton. And I know that we have a group of students that are in the audience that are at all different stages of the search process. Um, I didn't want to miss out on saying it's not too late to apply for this year. If you are a senior, um, you certainly can, or your friends can, if you hear information that you want to share with them, we'd, we'd love you to do that. Um, the application process, you do apply directly to our School of Management if you are interested in, in business. I know that there were some questions earlier about, you know, why should I apply to school of management? It's a little bit more competitive. Is there an internal process? Yes, there's an internal process, but getting started right away in the school of management is one of the best options if you know you want business. And certainly students change their mind and, and that's a no, very common in college, but um, it is beneficial if you want business and you know you want that to have that program and start right away. Um, we do have students that will do Harper College, do three years there and then do their MBA as well. So there's lots of different choices for students at Binghamton. On the application, um, we accept either the Common, the Coalition, or the SUNY application. So you do it's just indicate the major that you want, whether business administration or um, accounting, and um, we would put you into the School of Management specifically based on that. In test scores, you do have a form that you need to complete. Um, if you want to submit scores, you're welcome to. It is not a trick. I know a lot of students this year have been asking that. Um, we are optional. We know with COVID that students have not been able to take the exams. Um, so it is not something that we are having to um, have in consideration. Um, but we also know that some students did take the exam early or want to submit those scores. And certainly we can take that into consideration if you want us to. It's your choice, your preference, whichever you prefer. Um, we do need your high school transcript, and then I would also encourage you to send any college coursework that you did, um, AP, IB. You can report that also on the application, and then we will apply the credits once you're a student here. Um, we do require also one counselor letter of recommendation. As part of the application is the essay as well. 
So we um, will look at all of that cumulatively and make the best decisions that we can in the review process. I know many students are asking questions about how soon will decisions be released. This is our first year doing test optional, so it is taking us a little bit longer. So it probably will be, we guarantee for early action that students will hear from us by January 15th. For regular admissions, it is by April 1st. Um, for the most part, unless you apply a little bit later and if you missed some of those deadlines, if you did early action and it was a little bit later than our, our deadline, we may um, not be able to send that day, by that date. It may take us a little bit more time, but we're trying to get all, all the answers as, as quickly as we can. Um, and it, it definitely is a, a strong review process for us and we look really holistically at what you bring to the table. Um, some of you may also have more questions and be wishing that you could ask them. We encourage you to come and visit with us. Uh, Monday through Friday, we have live chat from 10 to five. Just go to binghamton.edu admissions forward slash visit. Um, and we'd love to talk to you more. I know um, I wanna thank all of everyone on my panel. You guys did an amazing job. You were absolutely fantastic. And you made, uh, you as a Binghamton alum and School of Management graduate, it made me wanna go back to school again. Um, and I hope that it did that so for our audience. We'd love to see many of them at Binghamton. And I wanna thank everyone um, for coming here today that was in the audience. Um, it's been wonderful talking with you and we look forward to continuing those conversations um, at a later time. And I wanna wish everyone the best in their senior year or a, a transferring process um, to in the audience. So thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good day.